Neoconservatism is perhaps even more difficult to describe than traditional conservative ideas. Well, I have spent many, many years studying this and trying to get to the bottom of it, and let me tell you what my research has revealed. Let's start from the beginning. The neoconservatives actually have very unlikely origins. Many of the neoconservatives, I can name two off the top of my head, Christopher Hitchens and Irving Kristol, they actually, believe it or not, started off as Trotsky communists. Back in the early years of the Soviet Union, they were Trotskyist. They argued that the Soviet Union would have been better off had Trotsky been in power instead of Stalin. Well, they were soon disillusioned by communism and they started slowly shifting to the right. Uh, first, they jumped on the New Deal here in the U.S. In Great Britain, many of them perhaps became Fabian Socialists. So they jumped on that and they started becoming vehement anti-communist. In the 1960s, there was a wave of leftist radicalism in the U.S. It wasn't pro-Soviet, but it was, um, well, how can I put this, anti-anti-communist, I guess? Well, that round of leftism didn't appreciate the anti-communist hard line of these people who they started calling neoconservatives. The first one to really embrace the label neoconservative was Irving Kristol. Irving Kristol wrote a book called Confessions of a Neoconservative. So Irving Kristol is an excellent example of a man who made the full transition from Trotskyism to New Deal liberalism, if you want to call it that, and eventually over to neoconservatism. Now, let me explain essentially what neoconservatives believe in. On domestic policy, they're known for being kind of moderate, maybe center-right. They don't want to abolish welfare, for example, but they do support welfare reform. The Welfare Reform Act of 1996 here in the U.S. is a pretty good example of their domestic policy preferences. This doesn't really set them apart from traditional conservatives and really gives them a lot of common ground with third-way Democrats in this country as well, and probably with third-way New Labour types in Great Britain. What stands out about the neoconservative, really, is their foreign policy. Now, a lot of intellectuals to this very day are debating exactly what it means to be a neoconservative. I have read some explanations that go sort of like this. Um, they're more moderate versions of traditional conservatives, whereas traditional conservatives are hardline anti-welfare, neoconservatives are more willing to compromise, and they barely even touch on foreign policy. Well, I can debunk that in just a couple of seconds. Traditional conservatives, like Pat Buchanan, like Russell Kirk, often are open to the idea of some kind of welfare state. They just argue that it needs to be reformed and it needs to be more of a hand up than a hand out. On domestic policy, really neoconservatives and traditional conservatives are not that much different. It's foreign policy where you see the biggest difference. Neoconservatives, um, this probably is a little bit of Trotskyist echo here, Neoconservatives believe, still, despite their disillusionment, that it's possible to make the world a better place. Not just their community a better place, not just the country a better place, but the world a better place. Whereas the Trotsky Communist theoretically seeks to do this through workers' revolutions, and as we know from the history of communism in practice, that just turns into a new kind of imperialism, well, the Neoconservative believes in spreading freedom and democracy. When the neoconservatives separated themselves from their communist roots, they embraced freedom and democracy, a lot of the um, liberal democratic ideas that dominate Western civilization today. So they want to share that with the world. They're very idealistic in the sense that they believe that this can indeed be spread all over the world. They make the mistake that many in the school of thought, including classical liberals, make in assuming the cultures all over the world, the people actually want freedom and democracy. Um, classical liberals make that mistake, neoliberals make that mistake, even libertarians make that mistake, and neoconservatives also make that mistake. The traditional conservative, like Russell Kirk, would argue that the world is diverse, that different groups of people, different cultures have their own traditions, 
and what works for us might not work for them. You can see my previous video on being conservative if you want. But neoconservatives believe there's a one-size-fits-all model. You can see this in the works of Irving Kristol, in the works of Leo Strauss, and the works of Christopher Hitchens, just to name a few. They believe that the military, mainly the U.S. military, should be used not just to pacify threats, but to spread freedom. Now, there are traditional conservatives who maybe have a more interventionist policy, but don't confuse them with neoconservatives. These more traditional conservatives, like perhaps Thomas Sowell, they favor a more interventionist foreign policy not because they want to change the world, but because they believe the world is a very dangerous place and we need to use the military to pacify threats. Neoconservatives, however, see it as perfectly justifiable to invade another country for humanitarian reasons. If you have a dictator like Saddam Hussein, for example, who was punishing his own people, torturing them, killing them, imprisoning them, interrogating them, etc., the neoconservative will say that's reason enough to invade. Even if they've done nothing to us, it's what they've done to their own people that justifies the invasion.